you think that they have uh, a decent amount of trade capital if you know a young star becomes available via trade or you know come becomes disgruntled wants to leave what do you how do you see their assets in terms of making a play for one of those young players to characterize the Knicks as having, as having strong trade capital I mean, they have the Dallas picks they have their own picks they have some young players of varying talent level I think if you're going to say the Knicks have like a really strong package for a star player then what you're saying is that package has to include Robinson or Barrett or the next high draft pick they have maybe this coming draft draft pick or the one after that because you know and I can hear all the Knicks fans saying well why would we trade those guys those are our crown jewels okay so say you're say you're even Oklahoma City with Chris Paul like a, a star that's age 35 or whatever like not going to be a superstar for the next five years like if you're coming to Oklahoma City with like Frank Nilakina, Julius Randle's salary and the Dallas pick in 2023 like What's in it for me if I'm the Oklahoma City Thunder? And that's just Chris Paul, like let alone Carl Anthony Towns or so like, you're not really bowling me over if I'm Minnesota without including one of the blue chip things. In New York, we're always going to, you know, speculate about players who Leon Rose had represented or was connected to at CAA. So, you know, the Devin Bookers and the Donovan Mitchells, those names are always gonna come up, but you're gonna have to blow Utah or Phoenix out of the water to get them to you know, get on the phone with you to talk about potential deals for either of those guys in the coming season. So I'm with you. It would take, I think, at least a Robinson included or a, a Barrett included uh, to make anything close to work there. And that's why I think more realistically, you're looking at players who are closer to their free agency 2020, 2021. I talked the other day about how the Knicks and the Nets are at least monitoring the situation in Chicago with Zach Levine, who could enter free agency uh, in 2022. Yeah, Zach Levine's an interesting player because, like, there's not a lot of evidence that he's a winning NBA player. I, I think what that evidence really says is if he's your number one ball handler, you're probably not going to go anywhere. But there is a version of him that if he's your second or third option, like if you put him on a team like Denver, where Jokic is essentially your point guard, and Levine is cutting baseline and shooting threes and running the break and catching outlet passes, that player, provided he gets his defense from just creating fires every single possession to like semi-passable, that's mm -hmm. an interesting player. And his contract isn't bad. Like his contract has actually aged pretty well. I'm not sure I would be the team that would buy on Zach Levine. I don't think that would be my game plan if I were the Knicks or, or the Nets. But if I had the right group of players, I could talk myself into buying on Zach Levine. I don't think I would personally, but I don't think it's like an insane prospect.